So I think we are live. Um, so welcome everybody to Spiritual Cafe Live, where we walk together and support each other on the path to becoming more spiritually aware, enlightened, and inspired. My guest today on Spiritual Cafe Live is a dear friend, and I've grown to adore him. He's a, an amazing teacher, an amazing medium, and a spirit artist, Joe Scheel. Hey, Joe. <laughs> welcome. Hey. Thank you very much, Laura. Thanks for having me. Thanks Appreciate for coming on. Yeah. yeah. And you were so funny. You like you called me up like 10 minutes before, like, what am I signing up for? What did I do? <laughs> you have no idea. I'm glad you had that much faith in me. <laughs> 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 Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, so for anybody who doesn't know, I just want to do a quick plug at the beginning before we get talking with Joe. Um, Joe, Sheil, myself, and John Holland will be doing an online demonstration of mediumship Thursday evening through Circles of Wisdom. And I'm so excited. It's the first time I'm going to be deming with you. And I, I can't tell you how honored I am that you even, even agreed to do that. <laughs> so. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It'll be, a, it'll be a lot of fun and a lot of I think a meaningful evening, so that's great. I think so too. I think it's gonna be wonderful, and I and I know we originally we had um, hoped to have it in person in Methuen, Massachusetts, oh. but yeah, I'm sad yeah. about that. But it, you know, it's it's like as long as we can serve some people and serve spirit, that that that's it's all good. You know, I'm a, I'm a little weird with this whole thing. You know, this this whole on screen type of thing, but but yeah. it's gonna be fine, and I'm still gonna be able to draw, and uh, you know, second camera will see the drawing, so people can see it up close and stuff, so that'd be great, you know? That oh, yeah. Be a lot of fun. Yeah, it'll be great. So definitely, you know, if you if you wanna see this, go to, um, you can go to my website or your website, right. um, you know, laurawister.com or um, josephsheel.com, mm -hmm. and, um, and tickets are available through there. And so, um, and yeah, you will be able to see Joe's spirit art. So for anybody who doesn't understand what um, Joe does, I mean, and, and he obviously he's a mental medium, which is, you know, he can deliver messages um, just through words, but as he's working and delivering messages, he's actually drawing your person from spirit without ever seeing them before from a photograph. Mm -hmm. Can you describe a little bit about that process of how that works for you? Well, it's, it kind of automatically just happens. I see people when I, when I get up uh, to do a demonstration or do it a private reading, um, I kind of put myself in what I call a zone. <laughs> you know, I kind of put myself in that little space right. that I am in my mind. And I begin to see faces in my mind, people in my mind, um, almost like I'm walking into a wedding reception. Oh. And so I see tons of them. And then I'm asking, like, who, who's, who's here for who? Come on, come on close, show me yourself. And I'm able to draw a number of people, but usually one is more prominent than others. And so I like to go with that, the one who's, like, I guess, not aggressive, but just the one I like to the best. And then I can begin to see them and draw them. I sometimes feel like I need to draw this, and I never see the face. It just, the face kind of emerges from the paper, it seems like. And then other times... Um, I've seen memories of people. Uh, it's rare, but it's been a few times where it's almost like remote viewing. And I'll see a picture of somebody's husband on the nightstand and I can copy the picture. And those are the easiest ones because the picture stays still. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, spirit kind of moves around and I'm not always. So I have to catch it real quick and put it down on paper real quick. And, and uh, I try to do that as fast as possible. Um, it's not my, you know, I, I get kind of squeamish sometimes about the kind of quality of drawing that you can do in that short a period of time. And I don't get time to spend with it and do all the shading or coloring that I would love to do to make a, a beautiful portrait. But by the same token, uh, we get them and, and we see them and, and it's tangible evidence that we're, we actually have people on the other side showing us them. And I, I think a lot of mediums can see them. Um, you know, I just happen to happen to be able to throw it down with a pencil and get it there. So it's, I'm I'm grateful, grateful for that. I kind of determined myself in the beginning to do that because I was so skeptical about what was happening with my life and my mediumship and everything else. I was like, what what's really happening? You know, it's like this is weird. I'm going crazy. Lock me up. You know. But, but, <laughs> I think we've all been there. <laughs> so, so I began to draw them to make sure that I really had them. And that's really what brought me to it. So it's kind of cool. 
So before, I mean, you, it's, I mean, of all the conversations I've had with you, it's like you've lived many lives in one life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really, you had so many stories like that too, it's Joe, it's that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so how did, how did your journey as a medium begin? Well, my journey as a medium, I, I have started drawing pictures of people on the other side when I was a little boy, like five years old. But I didn't know that was mediumship. I thought I was just, you know, some kind of, I was supposed to be a holy guy or something. And you know, my grandmothers wanted me to be a priest. So that's, that's what I thought my life was going to be. You know, you're a Boston kid from, you know, from, you know, an Irish Boston kid. You're going to be a, a, you know, a policeman, a fireman, or, you know, or a priest. That's it. You know, that's those yep. are your kind of thing. Um, exactly. Obviously there was more, but that's the way it seemed, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but from there, what happened was uh, I was in the, seminary for the second time like a, to become a permanent deacon in the Catholic Church and I started drawing pictures in the in the library because I'm dyslexic I can't read for too long or I'll just fall asleep in the book you know so <laughs> so I kind of doodle at times to keep myself awake so I would be drawing pictures of faces and people started walking up to me going why are you drawing my uncle you know and I'd be like I'm just drawing a guy and he goes no no that's my uncle and that's his hat and that's a, and I was like I was like look you can have the picture if you want but we're in the library be quiet you know <laughs> and so I'd give him the picture and and I'd say you know you know Tom seemed like a nice guy he goes how do you know his name and I'd be like ah, I have no clue how I know his or what's happening to me and it freaked me out to no end and sure. so I got very frightened I got very frightened being on a on a path of you know in a in a specific religion doing specific things for for those things being trapped in that if you will in one way not being able to think of those things because it was wrong or not you know all these other things i got very very nervous and i started asking everybody i went to my doctor i went to psychiatrist psychologist like what is up with me am i losing it because i knew of nobody else that did this you know and i didn't even know what a medium was to be honest with you mm -hmm. and so you know, I, I probably read it somewhere in the Bible, so what? Who cares? You know, it's like it wasn't right by that one, you know. And so I um, came to the point where I started to hear from a lot of people, credible people around me that said, you know something, Joe, you have some strange gift, but it's a gift nonetheless. And I don't think you should poo-poo it. I think you should kind of embrace it, see what it's all about, you know. And so I started to work more on it. I started to investigate more about it, about psychics and mediums and things like this. And, and uh, I didn't like everything I found. To be honest with you, I found most of it to be crap, you know. And oh. I just, wow, you know. Yeah. I don't know if I want to be, I don't know what's happening with me, but. So I kind of looked forward and then I started to meet some really wonderful people and it, it felt felt right to me and then I then I learned what was happening. And uh, and I started to see that it, it was helping others. And that's really what I got into the, the whole you know ministry thing in the first place was to be helpful to others. And here was the perfect venue for me to come and be helpful to others. So you know I, I think in, when I look back at it, I lucked out basically that's how yeah know. and we lucked out too because i can't imagine the mediumship world not having you and being you being a part of it i mean the, if anybody who's ever seen you work live it's like the, the jaws are dropping because that you know as in just me like minutes just minutes as you're you're bringing their person to life and then you're bringing to life on paper at the same time it's amazing thank, you. <laughs> yeah, well, thank them that's what's <laughs> yeah. I'm just like and, I'm, I'm the I'm the instrument in the process, you know. They're just playing me, so but, it's okay. Yeah, but you're willing to you're willing to listen, so that's great. Yeah. Um, so you know, it, how long have you been doing this work now? Oh, geez, I don't know. I <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Define old. I, don't know. <laughs> I, this, um, I think I got into this a little bit after 35 or something like that, I, you know, that, that era, and I'm, I'll be 65 in a month, so, you mm -hmm. know, that's, I mean, it's been a long time, yeah. and, and, you know, in the beginning, it was difficult, I didn't understand it, I needed to learn a lot of things, I had a lot of misconceptions, a lot of misguided, you know, teachings and, and things like that, and so, it's taken a while to kind of, you know, you know, I'm not the 
probably not the quickest bulb in the you know, brightest bulb in the circuit but it took me a while to say okay here this is what's real and this is what's not and this is what means something this is what brings things to to light to evidence to to reality and this stuff is just distraction and so after a while of of many years of of hard work and and you know really working hard to understand what was going on and how to use it within myself that's what's brought me to where i am today and teaching what one of the way i'm teaching and the things i'm doing you know yeah, speaking of teaching because we're, we're the two of us are teaching a class on saturday online excited about that that's true. yeah i'm really excited this is gonna be awesome i'm so i'm so thrilled to be working with you and um so um of course that's on our websites as well it's a one-day class um and uh, the way you teach is i just i'm in awe. i'll probably just sit in there just watching you speak <laughs> because there's so much to learn from you. I know you know a lot. Oh, so like, uh, you know, this, yeah. But um, uh, what what do you wish that you knew when you first started out? Uh, I think I, I, I think I wish I didn't have to drag so much of the misconceptions of the past with me. Uh, the fears, uh, the guilt, or, or the, you know, like, oh, I'm going to go to hell or all that. I, I wish I didn't have all of that to drag with me, but in another way, I'm grateful for all the pains and 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 difficulties in my life, all the all the the mishaps, all the mistakes, all the all the junk of my life, because it it has become um, really valuable tools to help others who are going through that. You know, it, 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 none of it was wasted. No, none of those pain, painful times or tearful times have been wasted. None of the losses in my life. Of, fam of family friends, you know, I lost my mother young, I lost my dad and a few other people, best friends, um, you know, uh, over the years for all kinds of reasons. And all of those hurts in life have kind of come into the light to be, to be part of the instrument, part of what goes on to really show uh, the story of other people's lives and, and spirit. And it helps me to see and understand it more richly and more caringly. And it's just, just great. But I think if I, I wish, I wish I had known more about the value and the beauty of this work. It was hard to see it through, through the taint of society who doesn't want us to do this through some of the misconceptions or, or mis, you know, misquoted Bible passages or this type of thing, you know, instead of coming to an understanding of the love that's involved with this work for, for some of us, not all of us, you know, but for, for, you know, for you and John, so you, I, 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 it's why I, I, I pick who I work with, you know, because I don't want to, I don't want to be full of baloney. I don't want to deal with baloney. You know, I, I just don't want to deal with a, a, a bunch of fraud or a bunch of, uh, misconceptions. I like working with people who caringly and compassionately work towards being the teacher, the the mentor, the the uh, the medium in the midst of this. And I think the spirit world work, looks for that. I think they really do love to have people that are serious about the work involved. So I I know that that's that's great. What else would I want to know? Uh, would have loved to know about this pandemic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so <psychic> there. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but I would have loved also to, I guess, just to, just to know that that um, the challenges that were involved, so that I could ready myself more and open myself up easier to through time and just relax a little bit more in it. You know, yeah. and um, I never realized how much work it was going to be. I, you know, at first it was like, oh, it was more like, oh, that happened. Ooh, cool, you know, cool, you know. And yeah. now today it's like, geez, I hope that happens. You yes. know, so it's a big difference in paradigm of how, how I look at it today. It's so. so true, isn't it? I mean, I remember when first starting out, all these things were very, they were very distinctive and very, I don't know, I don't want to say loud because it wasn't loud. It was just very clear to me. And then it sort of backed off a little bit and it's a bit quieter. And yeah. Uh, yeah. And not, um, all, not all your friends um, are ready for you to be this because they're not ready. You know, they're not open to it. And um, 
they don't understand where you're going with it. And so some of those hardships of relationships that kind of drifted away, things like that, um, I've had to come to terms with over time and, and been okay with, you know, even family. And it's okay because uh, I know in the long run over the years, they've come to me after tragedies in their life or they've come to me for their help where before, you know, it's like, what are you doing? You know, it's like, right. <laughs> it's like I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. so they know the seriousness in it. They know that they know the, um, the honesty in it. So it's all good. It, it, I think it's worthy of anyone who's serious about it. it you're worthy of it you, you, because you find you begin to come closer to your own soul, your own spirit and your own yeah. understanding of you and you, you grow from it. So I've grown a lot, you know, in this and i appreciate it so. i think it really has to happen hand in hand doesn't it we have to grow as well as our connection Absolutely. to me to consummate spirit. students <laughs> exactly <laughs> need both of those happening at the same time <laughs> um so where do you see the the field of mediumship going over the next few years and where would you like it to go where would you like to see it go and progress uh, maybe two different answers there you're actually actually right about that um yeah. I feel that there are some things uh, that need to be exposed or out, out, you know, outed, if you will, as far as how some of this works. As we come online, as we come into different places, um, anything that can be faked or can be uh, twisted or turned or is going to be suspect. So being real uh, to ourselves as mediums in our own lives as we as we live and being real to our clients and customers and people out there watching what we're doing i think is the most important and i think if there is a number of people who do that and i'm you know i'm trying to train people that way um if we do that then the shift comes over time maybe not in my lifetime but maybe in the next where it comes where it's now a valuable part of society and it's an accepted part of society and more and more professionals will rely upon it i know that you know i get a lot of um, introductions to people and and uh, referrals from psychologists psychiatrists me too and, yeah uh, yeah and it's just yeah. it's wonderful because there is a medical field that is well established and respected now seeing the value in seeing somebody like you or myself who are serious about our work, not just send them to somebody who's, you know, going to find out, you know, who the next boyfriend's going to be. Exactly. We're not fortune tellers. <laughs> so knowing that, I think that there'll be, there'll be a segment of this work that is respected. And I think, you know, in England and places like that, it, it, there is a segment of society that respects it quite well. In the United States, it's entertainment. You know, yeah. it, it's still a, it's still in that area, if you will. And uh, it's valuable for us because people are getting to know who we are. Exactly. But when it comes to the personal practice of this and personal spirituality of this, of, of living this kind of a life and, and working in this way, um, close to the spirit world, then it, it will change for the better. And it will change people too. I think they'll see a value in it. I mean... The organized religions are tearing places up and tearing things up and they're some some are misguided some are doing great work I, I, I have to say that you know there's huge huge conglomerates of sheep and then there's huge communities that are doing great work no matter what their faith is and in what right. it is but the people who have extrasensory perceptions extra senses if you will who seem to have this uh, sensitivity about life we we're either going to take it and work work with it in a positive manner towards the future for others for the world for the betterment of the world to see what's coming to 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 help uh, understand the continuity of life the 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 richness of I guess the question comes down to when I spoke for the Quincy Church on Sunday and and the last two questions of my whole talk were this you need to ask yourself um, what am I doing with this life? You know, the, the, the question isn't to, to ask, what am I doing in this life to cope? You know, that's a really bad question. It, that's a question that gets us in trouble. That's a question yeah, that needs to react into our next problem, our next difficulty, our next challenge. As opposed to asking, 
I am a spiritual being living this human experience. So what am I doing in this living experience to enhance or to enlighten or to uh, help my spirit? And when we do that, we then can judge, what do I want to take with me to the other world? Do I want to take all my stuff and all my tchotchke? Or do I want to take the moments like this with a friend having fun and, and speaking to people about the truth of mediumship? That's what I want to take with me. Those are the memories I want. That's the legacy I want to leave behind as well. That's the beauty of, of the artwork I do or anything. I mean, my paintings are going to lay around. They'll probably collect dust after I'm gone. You know, who knows? Or maybe they'll make somebody happy. And that's all I care about. That's all I care about. So if I can bring that to the next life, then I've done something better for my spirit and which enriches me to get closer to the soul. And that's, that's where I'm at. So I think if we, if we go on in this work, um, at some point in time or another, you're going to have to get real. Either, though, either that or you're, you're going to be kind of crawling around the bottom with, with a whole bunch of, you know, you who kind of stuff. And it's, it yeah. might be fun for a while, but it's not going to lead you to any, to any grace. It's not going to lead you to anything good in life. And, yeah, that and could that, be a stepping stone to it. You know, and and but recognizing when it's to, when it's good right. to leave that behind no and matter then, where you start and and you know i started at those points too of, uh, you know learning stuff that i thought oh and people would tell me that's real and i'd, I'd be like huh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay i hear you yeah. you know but mm -hmm. but remain remain a healthy skeptic that's all it's so right. okay Healthy skepticism doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> so it just means you're asking questions, you know? Right, right. Yeah, which yeah. is good. Yeah. yeah. So considering your your um, you know, your rig religious upbringing and the, the background that you have with this, what would you say to someone who, um, who says, how do you know you're not speaking to something evil or something that's pretending to be um, someone's mother? Um, how, do you, how, do you, how do you, how would you respond to something like that? Well, it's an excellent question, and it's and it's asked quite a bit. And I think yeah. I think it's the fear people have, um, because it's alluded to in the Bible, and it's alluded to in other things. And you know, um, I've practiced different religions over the years, but in my own confusion, um, and you know, even lived in a Buddhist monastery for a while, and did all kinds of things in Southeast Asia and up, trying to um, hone my philosophy and my theology of what I want to, uh, what I want to know for me to be true. And uh, one, of the, one of the things about mediumship is it, it's an experiential path to a faith in a higher, in a God, in a, in a higher place, in a spiritual world, and in, in, a, in, a, in a relevance of intelligence, a place of intelligence that is trying to speak to us. I have never, ever had any feeling of evil or notion of evil or determination of you do this or you do that or else kind of thing ever in any of my readings i think the reason for that is is that i really do call forth the holy spirit in my in my prayer before i read i really do believe that i'm trying to do the highest and best not something stupid or hurtful or manipulative all that is of mankind um humankind all those things that you see that uh are difficult they're really they're really quite uh, brought forth by our own intentions, not by, not by a spirit, not by a place that's closer to purity than it is in, you know, I don't see it as the devil or the, you know, Bezelzebub coming in and, and twisting up my mind or evil spirits. I don't have a lot of faith in that. I think everybody that I see dealing with those things and getting all nervous about it or getting involved in it are really kind of in their own troubles and they're bringing it to, they're bringing that about themselves and I don't think they're attracting it I think they're actually creating it yeah you know I and agree. so it's not attracting some evil spirit it's like no you are becoming an egomaniac or you're becoming this and you're and you're manipulating these people and you want it to be your way, not the way that maybe the heavens want it to be. And so therefore, you're creating this, this walk through H-E double hockey sticks that exist here 
for a lot of yeah. people. And we see it with friends and family and, and, and people around where, where I've seen people. It, it's, like, it's like addiction, you know? If somebody yeah. were to drink too much, you know, that's why they call it spirits. You know, yeah. they drink too much, and all of a sudden they're off. They're off the handle, or they're off. They're off kilter, and they they're losing everything. It's a, as as Ann Landry's used to say, the great remover. You know, it removes it removes furniture furniture polish. You know, alcohol removes furniture polish, and it also yeah. removes families and friends and everything else you ever had. That's you know, this point. type of thing. So, mm -hmm. there's there's where I believe the negativity can be. And that's why I think it's important to entice and inspire people that we teach to really be heading in a way that uplifts them to see from an eagle's eye what's going yeah. on and choose better, choose peace, choose love, choose these things for themselves. I can't change them. I can only kind of say this might be the path for you. So take it and try it. You know. And it's not to say that everything has to be all puppies and rainbows either. It's no. it just means walking through the fire, seeing what's real, and dealing with it and moving forward, right? Yeah, life yeah. life on life's terms is is I mean, life just keeps coming at us, left and right. I mean, uh, the the way we deal with it, the way we the different paradigms with different perspectives we look at, that's really what uh, helps us change to deal with life, to to see what life is and just the question i just asked you know what are you doing in this life to honor the spirit that is enjoying this life for now or or struggling in this life for now mm -hmm. what are you doing and, and and if you're having struggles or pain in your life why might that be you know what have you choose have you are you choosing your own way are you running the run the show or are you saying spirit what would you want me to do in this particular situation from a higher plane, from a higher perspective, from a from a God sense of I love you, I care about you, so why would you want to do this? You see, and mm -hmm. things begin to shift, and we see this very loudly right now. And you know, there's been people in the past, uh, Madame Dorosky, I think her name was, or whatever. I I can't remember the name, but there's been people who predicted the shift spiritually in this in this world come around 2000 and here we are at 2020 and things are separated and ready to explode mm -hmm. however there's a lot of spiritual soundness and activity going on and I believe in that quite strongly so my prayers are daily for the world if you will for the for the sake of let's try to see things in a peaceful manner not in a not in like you're that and I'm this very divisive. That's the, that, yeah. There's the humanness that that is the the distraction from the light. That's where the I, darkness lies. It's right here, in my opinion. I I have to agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> we do hold on to some of our opinions really tightly, don't we? <laughs> as, a, as a human being. Yeah, yeah. 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 I can understand. Can I, say? <laughs> I think out of fear, people hold on to their old beliefs because they you know because things are so unsettled right now and unknown yeah people hold on to what they know yeah, yeah. i think wayne dyer used to he, he told a story one time that, that um you know you you come to the edge of the cliff and you 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 slip on the rocks and you fall off the cliff and so you're plummeting and then one of the rocks comes one of these big rocks comes down with you and you grab it and you hold on to the rock because it's something solid, you know, like I'm holding on to this because it feels like, you know, this is solid. This is what, but actually it's not helping you at all. Actually, it's just bringing you faster, stronger to your crash. So, you know, when are you able to kind of look at what you're really holding on to and let go? Mm -hmm. And, and so that you might be able to fly, you might be able to find another way um, to your own peace. So, we we've got to watch that and and i you know i always appreciated that story i heard years and years ago so that's a good analogy good yeah. can you share with us um i mean i know there's a certain level of privacy obviously with readings but can you share with us one or two profound connections that you've had with people in spirit oh 
I know. Which, where do you start, right? <laughs> I, I, honestly, where do I start? Mm -hmm. Just amazing. Um, yeah. I think one of the, one of the fondest stories I have and one of the most touching stories I have, um, and probably one of the most profound, um, experiences I've had was I was uh, reading for a woman, uh, down in New Jersey and I had this little table, you know, in my little, my little book where I draw and uh, and so I'm taking notes and I'm drawing um, a face and I realized that I was with the woman's daughter who had passed away and one thing was very evident to me and that was the linoleum pattern on the kitchen floor and it reminded me of the linoleum I grew up with on my kitchen floor down in Situate, Massachusetts. And so I was looking at this linoleum. It's like being in a dream when you're in that state sometime where you're kind of like drifting around this kind of thing shadowy out here, but you're looking at this going, what is this all about? And there it is, she's on the kitchen floor. And I'm wondering what's going on. And so I'm trying to figure out how she passed. And I'm, feeling information, not necessarily hearing anybody talk to me, but looking around and so kind of remotely viewing the day of death, which is not always the most pleasant right. reading and certainly not something I want to hang out in. However, I thought it was important to the mom to know because she didn't know what happened. Oh. And so I looked and I saw the bottles of Madison on the, on the countertop of the kitchen next to the white stove and all this, you know, and I, I'm at this point I could draw the, I could draw the cabinets and how many cabinets there were and whatever, where everything was. And I couldn't see what happened other than the fact that she missed, she missed her medicine and she took too much. And so she wasn't trying to kill herself, but she had also been party in the night before and things like this so the medicine on top of that that's what happened so she od'd accidentally it was no not an intentional death or anything like that and so i was like wow what is this all about and all of a sudden in the room was an image of my grandfather who had come to me many times in my readings and my grandfather i loved him dearly but i lost him very very young and i was looked at him like like almost like he's standing in the room and I'm looking at him like what are you doing here and he's going like this so he's saying like she's just like me and I went what what and I and I and the woman I think was looking at me like what's wrong with you you know because I'm mm -hmm. kind of spazzing out over the, all this this stuff and then I remember the day my grandfather died he was on that linoleum floor in situate Oh. He had a massive heart attack on the kitchen floor. And I said, was it a heart attack? And then I went, oh, my God. And I looked at the woman and I said, your daughter died on Christmas morning. And she burst into tears. And I burst into tears. Because that's when my grandfather died in front of me on Christmas morning when I was eight years old. Oh. And I, I looked at it and went, and we both were crying, painful tears, but yet these beautiful experiential cheers of like, can you believe this? Can you believe what just happened? Because what else more can you, do you need to say? Right. That piece of information, uh, the experience was incredible. And we, we sat there and cried for another half hour. And then I drew her picture and, you know, there she is. And... Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I'm grateful to my grandfather. I'm grateful to the spirit world. I'm grateful to her. I'm grateful to the woman who, you know, who came. Because what does that do for me? In a lot of ways, it's not about, you know, collecting a dime for anything like this. It's, it's like that just reinforced my faith in God, my faith in the higher place, my faith in the con continuity of life and the reformation of people and, and the fact that we don't know a lot of stuff here. Yes. But we can know the beauty of it if we continue to kind of reach further and have the conversation with those who've been here and done this already. And so that's one one reading that that really, really kind of moved me. 
Absolutely. Wow. That's it, Laura. You, you're like you like that that other lady that interviews people and gets them to cry now. So. Oh. <laughs> I'm so wallet. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> what was like the funniest reading you've ever had? Oh wow. I know, right? Jeez. <laughs> oh, I've had so many. Um I've had so many. I guess I guess one of the funniest ones was um where the woman's husband was coming through and he was an absolute pistol. He just told joke after joke. Jokes I'd never heard before. And <laughs> and I was like, he's saying something about and she'd roar. She goes, Oh, he used to say this all the time. And so she'd tell me the joke. And I said, Now he's saying this. He goes, he goes, he used to go down, he's going down his pattern. He's going down, like his party jokes. You know, like he'd tell everyone in a row. And one after another came through. It was, it was like, wow, that's it was awesome. Like, it was just such a fun time. And I and I earned a friend. I drew his picture and I earned a friend because he has come through in other people's readings. Really? Yeah. <laughs> To kind of lighten it up a little bit, almost like he's like like awesome. I made a friend on the other side, so I always enjoy that one. That's that that's always been a fun, fun one for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That, yeah, it's that's so cool. Do you have other people who have stepped forward over time and and stuck with you um, as far as helping you through other readings, or it's just him? Yeah, I mean there yeah. there have been people that that have helped me over time in in readings, and sometimes even family family that I've read for like 20 years ago and all of a sudden they show up because another family member died oh, and I, re yeah. I remember them and I don't remember people in the living never mind that you know but all of a sudden <laughs> I know, you, know, yeah. you know so it's kind of wild that way you know yeah I had one man who I, I drew his um I drew his dog and I'm, I don't do that all the time, you know, it's not something, I've drawn horses and dogs and people's rabbits and people's turtles and all this other stuff, you know, but, but I drew the dog and then he was funny because he kept calling me up afterwards saying, how come you don't have my dog, how come you don't have my dog on your website? Oh. <laughs> They're like our children, you know. <laughs> yeah, he sent me a picture of them, and sure enough, it's the same dog. And that was like, it's like I'll get him up there. So for a while, we had him up there. We had him up there. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Amazing. People are great, you know. But people, yeah. people love whether they love their love their animals, and I and and I know, I know people do. And I've got my two little cats here. I'm trying to get used to. So, but I'm doing well, you know. <laughs> I'm to the point where I can pet them and everything now. <laughs> it, oh, really? Were you not a cat I'm person before? <laughs> I'm very good at feeding them and opening and closing the door 20 times a day. <laughs> now, That's a requirement. Now the petting and the purring is going on, so it's good. Oh, good. So you've, yeah, they've, that, now they own you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no yeah. I'm the master of my house. Yeah. Well, it's obvious that you love your work, and I can't imagine you'd want to do anything different but if you couldn't do this work what would you be doing i'd be painting i um i'm set out a while back i i stopped painting uh when i was in college because i had some paintings i had six paintings stolen from a gallery in boston no way not to paint i stopped painting it all together i said because it was like to me it was like a rape you know i, yeah. I felt violated completely and everybody said, well, that means your, your stuff's good, so you should keep painting, you know. And I, and I was. I was selling paintings and doing well back then, but I just stopped completely. It's through this work of drawing people and doing the orographs and doing things like this that have brought me back to say, well, I want to show people I can paint. And I started to paint again. Okay. And I do believe that it's a spirit that, you know, the spirit where I was working at the time that helped me to find my hand and my eye and my my heart again for painting and so i don't get enough chance to do it but i try to do them every now and then and i'll do a series of paintings and then i'm you know then i'm back to working again but i think if i if, if the day i have the time i i think all i want to do is have a paintbrush in my hand and i want to i kind of want to leave the world one beautiful painting you know just like just something that that will be remembered and in, in, that's that's the way it is you know so i i find it i find it peaceful i find it mediumistic you know i find like i'm not alone when i'm painting uh. I'm, I'm definitely definitely the pain is going on and finding its way uh, 
just the way it's supposed to, you know. It's just so I find it very intriguing, and I I sculpt and I do other types of artwork. I write music. All that's wonderful and creative, and and uh, but I still want to get the paint on the canvas right. So that's my challenge, if you will. Well, you do a beautiful job. So, <laughs> so you feel like you've got people helping you doing that, or are energies helping you? Yeah, I do. I. I don't think I would have found my hand again until um, until I actually um, felt that somebody really helped me, and um, and I you know I don't know why he wanted to help me or why he comes from the other side, but he was he was a quite a, quite a well known painter, and um, up in Rockport, Massachusetts, and and uh, I was begging him. I, I was looking around the room at his paintings. I was doing readings in his gallery and and um, and Dark Star philosophy are up in uh, yep. and uh and uh philip shoemaker is the is the uh is the artist and i i don't know if he works with me anymore but but then it was tremendously helpful all of a sudden i felt like i had found my way you know back to where i had been many years before and uh you know that may that might have been eight to ten years ago and and so it's been since then that I've really tried to do fine art and really I, I do a lot of eclectic things that nobody ever gets to see after I'm gone then people can laugh about them or cringe at them or do whatever <laughs> <laughs> my modern art but uh maybe one of these days I'll get brave enough to show them but we'd love but, to see them <laughs> but the uh, the fine art was to kind of show people that I you know, I do know this. I do. I I am in tune with this, and so I I believe every great artist who's who who's had a mentor, who's had teachers and training. It's almost like this. There's something passed on from one to the other, and just beautiful masterpieces come from that. And that's what my hope is, that I leave one behind. That's all. I'm sure there'll be more than one. Positive, actually. <laughs> so um, on an ending note, for any mediums or student mediums or some people who might be beginning this path or thinking that they want to step on this path of mediumship or feeling like they are, what kind of advice do you have for the beginning medium? I think first, find, find, a, t find a teacher, uh, you know, open your mind, but find a teacher that has integrity and find a teacher that's really going to be there for you and kind of enlightens you and, and, and uh, inspires you. And, um, you know, you've got your, your beginner circles and your beginning teaching and, and the way your, your calm demeanor and things. I mean, sometimes people really need that patience from us and, and clear explanations about what's going on from the teachers. So yourself, John, you know, Janet, whatever, they, they all have a way of, of kind of getting it to you and you'll find where you like to that, that is enjoyable for you, that you feel, um, feel comfortable and you come as the, come, come as the skeptic, you know, come as the healthy skeptic and say, is, are they telling me the truth? Is this real? Is this right? You know, it's okay to be that way. It's okay mm -hmm. to t take your time. You can always make a new decision. So I would say the first thing is to have the courage to try have the courage to go forward, especially if you're feeling things that are different than your friends and normal and, and that type of thing. Feel if you've had those kinds of feelings all your life, it may be that, you know, you don't, you're not depressed, you don't need medication, but I'm not saying get off your medication, but I'm saying you might have something going on that you really, uh, a sp the, there's a spiritual answer in the midst of it all. And, uh, you know, you don't, you don't just, drop the drop your meds or whatever and do this. Right. but you take your time and you walk the walk for a while and see if it's right for you you can always make a new choice um, right. there are others who who want to do this because they want to hang out a shingle over the weekend and make money you know and that's all it's about and f for them um, be prepared for the crash and burn you know yeah. because I'm I'm you know there are very good mediums coming up and coming out and being coming known and there's going to be a stark difference between the mediums that are being trained by yourself and John and myself and that type of thing so um, I'm just hoping that we can evolve it into something very important for society itself exactly. so, but 
Great. Thank awesome. you so much for having me. I appreciate this. Oh, it's an honor. I'm glad to, I'm glad to have you on. And uh, just a reminder, uh, we will be having a mediumship demonstration Thursday evening, 7 p.m. Eastern. And you can find that information through my website, lauraworcester.com or josephsheel.com or circlesofwisdom.com or johnholland.com. So, <laughs> um, so that's Thursday night and there's a few tickets left. It's a small group. It's not a huge group. We're not having hundreds of people. So um, and, and if you've never seen Joe work and do spirit, um, when those faces just emerge from, from the paper, amazing. And, and it's just in moments, all of a sudden you just see, you know, your loved one just emerge from that paper. It, it's it's a, something to behold. And also we're, we're teaching a class on Saturday, just a reminder as well, it's called Sensational Mediumship. And that's through Circles of Wisdom. And you can also find that on our websites. That'll be fun. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> so thank you very much, Joe. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Laura. Good luck with everything. Good. Thank we'll you. You as well. And well, yeah. Well, I'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Peace. Take care. Bye bye.